Okay, welcome to this very quick review of the brand new Outlook for Mac which came out today. Um, for the purposes of this um, review, I'm going to call it Outlook 2015 because that's when the rest of the Office suite is likely to be released. Um, this version is 15.3. Um, some new features in this version, mainly it's just a brand new interface so it looks clean, it's kind of reminiscent of Outlook, uh, sorry, of One, uh, OneNote for Mac which came out a few months ago and also the new um, Word, Excel and PowerPoint apps for iPad so you've got your tabs along the top which all look fairly familiar. Um, another new feature is um, the weather which is on the calendar section um, over here. Um, I'm not sure if that's very necessary considering you can access that from um, your notification centre. It also has better um, email signature support so you can have just like on default mail app um, for Apple you can have multiple signatures assign them to particular accounts and things like that. So they're the main features that have been um, shown off by Microsoft for this. I'm aiming this review primarily at people who are thinking of switching away from the default mail app um, on OS X, mainly because it, it still has issues even after the, the uh, Yosemite um, release. It's um, I'm still getting um, email stuck in my outbox, especially when I've got attachments, and I seem to be getting um, emails on my computer at least five or six minutes after they arrive on my iPhone and iPad. So the default app isn't perfect. The question is, is this? Uh, a reasonable alternative to switch to. So we're just going to take a look. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Outlook, it's basically a mail app, a calendar, your contacts app, um, a task app and a notes app all rolled into one. So it's a productivity suite. Unlike Apple where they divide everything up into separate apps that talk to each other, this is everything in one place. So it could be suitable um, for your workflow. It, it kind of depends on how you feel really. Um, it supports um, Exchange email accounts, it also supports iCloud, obviously um, Hotmail accounts, Ymail, Google Mail and generally it supports um, all mail providers. Now taking a quick look at this, the first thing I noticed was that it doesn't actually support full screen view which is quite unusual. Um, considering the rest of the Microsoft Office apps do actually support that and it's something that's probably going to get a little, little bit annoying. Um, another thing I found that when you set up your iCloud account is you'll notice that if you have folders set up, so if you have rules and you automatically forward emails to a particular folder, they also don't show up. You have another step you need to include, um, which you need to just go to Tools, IMAP folders, and then you need to individually subscribe to various folders um, that you may have set up on that account. Other than that, no, setting up um, email accounts on Outlook is a pretty straightforward process. It finds all the server information for you, so it's actually really, really quick. So to send an email, we just click New Email, and it looks very much similar to um, default mail app. Um, similar formatting options, um, although a few extras, you can change background colour and things like that. So. If you want to get fancy, you can do that. Um, and just like the default mail app, it will um, remember who you've received emails from. So if you just start typing in a name, um, it will automatically bring up those contacts. It will also do the same if you've stored contacts in the uh, contacts part or the people. That's what it's called, the people part of this program. Moving on to calendar. Um, looks pretty similar to um, the default Apple uh, calendar app iCal. Um, you can color coordinate everything, you can set up uh, meetings or appointments um, and that looks pretty much the same. You can uh, set up a meeting with a particular person, what it's going to be about, where the location is, you can set up reminders, you can give it a color if that's what you need to do, um, you can give it additional security um, settings as well. Now one thing I do like um, about this app more than the iCal app is if you have two things going on at the same time. If you have a look, uh, well if you try doing this on the iCal app, uh, I've given an example here, I've got two things on Monday at nine o'clock, it puts those two things side by side. Now if you um, 
try to do that with the Apple app. It overlays everything, so everything looks really, really messy, which isn't a, a great look at all. So this calendar app is actually far, far easier to read. Now, if you've already subscribed to um, various calendar ecosystems from Apple and Google, you're going to have quite a hard time importing those in. It's just as difficult as it is before. Um, you, the situation you're in, and, this, and that's the kind of the same with the contact section, is you're going to have to sort of leave those ecosystems and kind of join a new one if you do want to switch over to this app, which is a little bit of a pain. Other apps, other mail apps um, work really, really well with... Um, Apple and Google, other calendar apps, other contact apps, they do it really well. And for some reason, Outlook has always struggled and it looks like it's going to continue to struggle in that area. The contacts tab, um, you can arrange things, you can have smart folders, you can um, color coordinate things. So it's pretty much uh, what you've always had and what you've always been able to do with this and with other apps. You've also got tasks and notes, which uh, do look pretty identical, to be honest. Um, and the features you have on here are pretty basic, and there are probably some better note-taking apps um, out there, which give quite a bit more functionality. So overall, um, a bit of a mixed bag. If you do want to switch uh, from uh, the default mail app and the default calendar apps and so on you're going to have a pretty hard time if you've got a lot of information on there however if you do want to use outlook as a separate app for work tools and work emails and keep it separate from your personal stuff then this is a pretty good option you can currently get uh, microsoft outlook this brand new version if you're a office 365 subscriber and they currently offer 30 day free trials on that so if you're thinking of switching, tr do the trial first and see how you get along with it because in some ways it's really good and some ways you can have a hard time switching over. So just make sure you investigate before you switch.